Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Tech Tips, Scuba Tech Tips. Hope there's something in here to uh, for you. Uh, I ran a dive store for almost 50 years, and, and towards the end of that time, it became very, very common for divers to come into the dive store and say, I want that brand new XTW01 I read about with all the adjustments. <laughs> sometimes we had them, sometimes we didn't, but the question is, do you need to have a, do you need to have a regulator with a lot of adjustments on it? That is diver adjustments. Regulators have adjustments which are usually handled by the service man when you take it in for service. But if you're underwater, if you're diving along there on the reef and all of a sudden you say, hey, I want to make it a bit easier, or a bit harder, whatever, you can adjust it underwater. Do you need that stuff? Well, you know, I don't want to say yes or no. That's entirely up to you. But at the very least, let's make sure that you understand that stuff. Okay? Let's start off with just about the simplest second stage you can get. Here it is. This is old. Doesn't matter. A brand new simple second stage is just like this. You have a hose coming in, diaphragm on the front, purge button, you suck on it, you get air, you blow it, the exhaust comes out. It's just about that simple. And if you look inside, <clears throat> You can look at the components. There's the cover, there's the rubber diaphragm or silicone diaphragm, and there's the actual lever that opens and closes the valve to give you air. You suck in, the diaphragm pushes the lever, you get air. You stop breathing in, you blow out, and the lever closes, air stops flowing, it goes out through and out. That's about as simple as you can get. I'm going to leave that out there so that we can occasionally refer to it. Okay? Simple. Now, a number of years ago, as a matter of fact, about 60 years ago, <laughs> in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, Scuba Pro, big, big name. A lot of everybody knows Scuba Pro. And, uh, and uh, they have been there now regarded as one of the premier, one of the top quality scuba uh, companies in the world. Their, their gear is preferred by many technical divers, a lot of them cold water divers. It's particularly good gear. I used to say this, the Mercedes-Benz of equipment. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect, but it's pretty good stuff. Anyway, many, many years ago, Scuba Pro came out with a new idea. <clears throat> and what they said is, we're going to make a regulator that is adjustable by the diver, adjustable underwater, okay? And they produced this regulator. They had one just like that, made by Healthways. A little bit of trivia on the side here. Scuba Pro actually was Healthways. Uh, you guys probably didn't know that, but anyway, another story. So they made this regulator, beautiful regulator like this, and then they added an adjustment. You can see the knob on the side here? There's a knob here. Can you see that, Kevin? There's a knob there. You turn the knob back and forth like that. It's a pretty standard regulator in a lot of ways. Just as with this old simple one, when you do the service and you put in a new low pressure seat, and you adjust the intermediate pressure, we've talked about this, then you adjust the second stage, to suit the low pressure air coming in. You adjust the second stage so the air isn't flowing, but it's very easy to pull the diaphragm in and get air. And that's adjusted by that little screw down in there. I'm not sure if you can get in there, Kevin. Can you see down in there? The folks, you guys have seen this before when I've talked about uh, second stage adjustments before. That is your breathing effort adjustment. Special tool, you've seen it right here, and Kevin can put a link in. Special tool goes in, put the hose on, and put the air to it, and then you adjust it. And you adjust it so that air is not free-flowing, but that it's extremely easy to breathe from it. Just about that easy. And that's pretty standard. That's the same with every regulator. What Skiba Bro did was kind of neat was they said, okay, this is great. The serviceman can adjust this so the rig is set to factory standard is easy to breathe. Suppose, suppose we put a knob on the end, <laughs> right like, like this, <laughs> on the end, so the diver can turn the knob, and he can turn the knob, and he can increase or decrease the pressure on that lever, on the spring on that lever, a little bit, not too much. He can increase or decrease it. So let's say, for instance, <clears throat> the regulator is slightly out of adjustment, and it begins to free fill. A little bit of air leaking out. You just take this, and you turn it clockwise, pushes the spring in, increases the pressure on that low pressure seat, stops the free flow. But you still have fantastic easy breathing. Or let's say perhaps the opposite. You're breathing and swimming along and whew, that's getting hard to breathe. What's wrong with my regulator? For some reason, it's, you can feel a, a little bit of uh, uh, res resistance to your breath. It's getting hard to breathe. And what do you do? Turn it 
counterclockwise. Oh, that's better. Not too much. If you go too much, it'll start to free flow. But the point is that the diver can adjust this underwater. Skipper Pro was the first with this idea that I'm aware of anyway, and this was their first regulator. This in particular regulator is quite rare, actually, although this concept and this style, this design is very, very common. Skipper Pro's regs today is very similar to this, but this particular model, this particular one, is quite rare because it has printed right on it balanced adjustable. That's what they called it. They called it the balanced adjustable. But they only put that name on the regulator for a very, very short period of time. So this particular model is very, very, uh, is, is quite rare. It's quite odd to have those words printed on there. Only a few are made like that. But that's what they call it. The balanced regulator and adjustable, adjustable by the diver. So that was the very first one. Then what happened? Well, what happened then got even more interesting because what happened then is, again, Skiver Pro, other companies did the same thing. But Skiver Pro, uh, as, as they went along, they said, okay, we got to keep adding more features to make diving safer and more enjoyable for the diver and also to help our sales. You know, <laughs> a lot of features on all kinds of products, cellular phones, televisions, automobiles, motor, there's a lot of features, and sometimes those features are only on there to increase the sales. But anyway, they decided to add another feature, which is kind of neat. So here's a much more modern, this is, this is a very typical current uh, Scuba Pro regulator, and it has got the, exactly the same adjustment inside there, and <clears throat> it has, on, on the end here, it also has a knob that you can turn to increase or decrease the effort. But it has one more little adjustment. Can you see right up in here, Kevin? Yes. Can you see that funny little lever right there? Yes. Now look, I'm going to turn it. Oh, the other way maybe. There you go. Now oh, let's turn the other way, see? This goes there, and it goes there. Of course, you can stop it anywhere in between. Now, I'm going to show you inside. I'm going to try to show you inside anyway, if I can. So now we're looking down inside, and you can see when I turn this little lever on the side, can you see down the side there, Kevin? There's a little vein, a little, a little flap if you like in there. And when you turn it like this, the vein blocks the flow of air. When you turn it like this, it doesn't block. And you can stop it anywhere in between. That's a Venturi. Yeah, this is the very first Venturi, one of the first Venturis, adjustable Venturi on regulators. Many regulators today have a Venturi, but it's a built-in Venturi. So they're, 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 they're a little harder to describe, but I will try. It's a Venturi that as you start to breathe, the Venturi is activated automatically if needed. That's a little hard to explain as well. You don't need a Venturi unless you need a lot of air. That's what a Venturi does. It gives you a blast of air, okay? Sometimes you need that. If you're working hard and, and, and you find you're puffing and panting, you can turn the Venturi on and, oh, oh boy, and you got lots of air. Well, some regulars now have automatic Venturis. If you're breathing normally, in and out like a normal, you don't need a Venturi, you don't get it. But if you suck on that regulator, you need a lot of air, the Venturi automatically opens and you get a lot of air. This is a manual Venturi. You turn it like so, and it breathes normally. Turn it like that, like this, and oh wow, fills your lungs up. So there you have now a regulator that is, has an adjustable breathing effort, and it has a Venturi. So what's the downside? There's a downside. I've explained the adjustments to you. What's the downside? Well. Let's take a little look, and I'll show you the downside. First of all, let's take this apart. I'm not sure if you Skipper Pro owners are aware of this little locking mechanism, a little pin that you take out. And once you take that pin out, now you can take the cover off. Now, the cover is almost exactly the same as that, that old regulator I showed you from the 1960s. There's a cover with a purge button. Underneath, you'll find a... You'll find a slip ring. I call it a slip ring or a friction ring. This is kind of neat what that's for, because underneath is the rubber or silicone diaphragm, just like that old one. Things haven't changed much in 60 years. Huh? This little slip ring sits on top of the rubber and is there for one reason only. When you put the cover on and you screw it on, which is not the same as that one, when you screw it on, it doesn't grab the rubber and twist the rubber. That's all it's there for. Yeah. But anyway, let's take those off. And now look inside. Now compare the insides of this one to the insides of that 60-year-old regulator. Can you do that, Kevin? Can you see what's going on here? And here we got a lever. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. Over here, you have a lever, too. Uh, a little weirder. But you also have a spring adjustment. You have a spring adjustment on the end, and you have the Venturi up top. And the whole thing is built into this long canal. In fact, 
I'm not suggesting you guys do this unless you know what you're doing. You've been watching my videos and you learned a bit and, and you're prepared to take your disassembled regulator to the dive store if necessary to have the dive store owner reassemble it. Uh, don't be embarrassed. Happens all the time. I used to get guys coming in all the time to our dive stores saying, hey, I, I, I wonder if I can get you to put my reg back together. <laughs> don't be embarrassed. It happens sometimes. But if you take this apart, like so, now you can take the adjustment off, here's the adjustment, and you can see the adjustment pushes on the end of the of the pin. There's a little pad, there's another spring in there, now the lever is down and that all comes apart. So the point is <clears throat> that along with the Venturi and the adjustment comes a lot of parts, bits and pieces and parts. Two downsides to all of that cost, of course they cost a lot more. And secondly, not quite as good a reliability. You can't get any more reliable than that. These are reliable, very, very well made, but you do have to get regular service and take good care of them. Now here's a brand new regulator. I'm almost afraid to touch this regulator. This belongs to Steve here at uh, one of his regulators uh, that he sells here at uh, Dive Source in Oshawa. And this is brand spanking new, beautiful regulator, very similar to the Skiver Pro. Has a lock for the, for the cover and, and, and has, here's the lever on the side. You see, things haven't changed much. Can you see that, Kevin? There's a lever on the side. For your Venturi effect, you see that there? And then here's the knob on the end for adjusting the spring. So things haven't changed too much. This Skiba Pro regulator is about 30 years old. This is not terribly old by Skiba diving standards. It's about 30 years old. And here's brand new 2023 version of a fully adjustable, fully balanced regulator. So now at least you have an understanding of what these different features are for, what they do. And you actually see how they mechanically work. Now when you go into a dive store looking for a first regulator or a new regulator, now you'll at least understand what the dive owner is talking about. I hope that helps. Interesting. Send me some comments. If you have some questions, I'm always here for you. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Take care, guys.